what would you suggest those people do in order to think bigger and be able to realize that, hey, this is possible for you too. Yeah. So I think there's a few things. Like one of the things is like, who do you surround yourself with? Like if you're around people that are working jobs and that's all they do and they don't think big, it, you know, and, not, and, and first I just want to also be clear, like I don't have any negative energy or have any, you know, I never would talk down on anyone that chooses to work a job. I have amazing team members at our companies that I'm so grateful for and they are freaking studs. Um, but the you know if you're if you're trying to let's say for example it's like you're trying to you know make 100 grand a month in your business or 50 grand a month and the five people you spend the most time with are negative and they're not business owners and they're not you know generating that type of income well you need to get around people that are doing that because for you know if when you're not around it it's like you can get around people and it's like 50 grand for the month would be a terrible month or 100 grand for the month would be like crap the last month was terrible You know, so one is, you know, the people that you surround yourself with will help you raise your lid of belief, because if you're around people that are doing it, it makes you believe it's possible. You know, it's like Roger Bannister, you know, uh, he, he was the first person to ever run the four minute mile, a sub four minute mile. And so what happened after Roger Bannister ran the four minute mile after no one did it and doctors and scientists said it was physically impossible and incapable for the human body to do that. There's literally been hundreds of thousands of people that have now ran a four minute mile after that, including high school kids have ran a sub four minute mile. And so why is that? Well, the belief was raised because someone else did it. And so if you can get around people that are doing it, instead of being around people that are negative and that aren't doing the things that you want, that is one of the the proximity effect is going to allow you to see bigger and to think bigger. But then going to that next part of the question, which is, okay, well, if you're going to hire someone, you know, don't hire just to hire. Again, going back to our earlier conversation, if you're going to hire and it's one of those first roles, you need to be hiring for your weaknesses. What are your strengths? And you need to hire someone to support your uh, your weaknesses so that you can focus on continuing to grow and to push the things forward that are in your strengths. And so those are, you know, a couple of the things that you have to keep in mind. And, you know, there's a lot of tactical things. Like one of the things that I, I personally, you know, believe in doing is if I'm going to hire a new team member for, you know, especially a fledgling growing company, I want at least three months of reserves of their salary and the operating account on top of whatever other, you know, capitals in that operating account. I want to have those reserves. So I have some runway to get them onboarded, get them up to speed and get them performing so that I can recognize, you know, that ROI um, as quickly as possible. But I have some runway um, to get them up to speed and get them into the business. So uh, those are a couple of the, the things that I think about with that is like, one, you have to believe because if you just don't believe it's po- not possible, yeah, you're not going to do it. And two is there's some tactical sides of like, okay, well, hire someone that makes sense for you to hire. Um, you know, if you're an amazing salesperson, don't hire another salesperson as your first hire. You're already great at sales. Get someone else to help you do the other stuff uh, or vice versa. So that's my thoughts on that. A hundred percent. Because when I was working in corporate America, like you said, no, no shame on working in corporate that actually you know, was able to pay for my, my assets and my dream lifestyle. So I definitely show a lot of love to my W2 job. But once I actually started hanging out with people that were doing seven figures, that were doing eight figures, that's when I was able to realize and rub shoulders with them and join masterminds and communities. That's definitely when I started realizing and had that belief in myself that I could do it too. Which by the way, Cody, I'm gonna need to send you one one of these shirts, man. Oh, Did you rock I it? love that. Yeah, dude, yeah, I'll wear it. Come on down with the, with the State 48 collab. I love it, <laughs> I love it. That's so awesome. what I wanna ask you is how did you elevate your circle? I know as we're wrapping up right now. Yeah, um, I mean, I am intentional on doing that all the time. I mean. I've been investing in coaches, masterminds, mentorships for 10 years. I and and people will say negative things about that sometimes They're like, "Oh, like, oh, you're just giving them money and, you know, it's like, what are you even really getting?" and, you know, "Oh, you could just learn it on your own. You could just go on YouTube and learn the thing." Or like, I pay for I have two business coaches right now that are very expensive to, you know, coach me. And, you know, one is Jeff Mask, which he was on the executive team that grew Infusionsoft to a hundred million a year. So he coaches me and I've been coaching with him for two years. And then my other coach is Adam Coffee, which he exited a company for over a billion dollars, CoolSys, the, you know, one of the biggest HVAC companies in the nation. 
And so I have those two guys coaching me and in my corner helping me so I can continue to grow. And so from like a mentorship standpoint, like I believe everyone should have mentors. Um, obviously, everyone's going to be in a different financial position of what they can afford to pay for that. But I always was trying to get myself into rooms with people that were doing more so I could one, raise my lid of what's possible and my belief of what's possible. But then two, to network with the other people in those rooms that are doing similar things that I'm doing. And so I could build new friendships and new relationships with them and have, you know, I almost call them like battle buddies. Like these are other people that are on the same entrepreneurial crusade that I'm on that we can, you know, share war stories and like, go, you know, Hey, I'm doing this and this is working or, Hey, this isn't working. What are you doing in, in your business? And what's, what have you seen work out well for that? And, you know, getting yourself, um, and, and, you know, it's like, yeah, like a lot of those, like you got to pay to play, but I will pay all day long. If it means like there, there's two M's you learn from, you either learn from your mentors or you learn from your own mistakes. And if you're, if in a lot of people they're like, oh, well, I'm just going to figure it out or I'll watch YouTube videos. It's like, okay, have fun. Like there's a reason that I, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a braggy person, but there's a reason I am where I am because I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in coaches, mentorships, and masterminds while other people are cheap asses and want to just, you know, figure it out on their own and, you know, be self-made on their own. It's like, I'm going to pay someone so I can get here in this amount of time while someone else takes freaking, you know, an extra five years because they had to learn the mistakes on their own versus I'm just paying to cut I want the fast pass at Disneyland, man. Like I'm not trying to wait in line. I'm trying to get the answer that I need to just go and do the thing. Like I don't want to, I don't want to go through the pain and suffering. There's already enough pain and suffering in, in entrepreneurship. I want to get, I want to, I want to know, you know, my blind spot around the corner. So I don't get freaking, you know, knocked out when I turn the corner. Like I, I don't, I don't want to experience that.